So, now we get into some practical. What can we do? What can we do about it? We can start by taking our own experiences seriously. We can start by trying to pay some attention to ourselves. What am I thinking? What am I feeling? What does that feeling connect with? What are the associations and reactions going on in my mind? What's the gut response? I have a gut response to this. Okay, hang on a sec. Let's look at that gut response. Let's think about that. Skillful engagement with personal experience. And one of the essences of skill is practice. And we need practice. So practice. Try it. Do it. One of my favorite... <clears throat> One of my favorite exercises to suggest to uh, uh, to suggest to varying people uh, to uh, to various people, um, and I've I, I suggest this to uh, I, I suggest this to budding writers. <clears throat> um, I, I I suggest this to budding writers. I suggest this to people in um, in times of emotional duress. Um, I, I suggest this to damn near everybody. Um, these are awesome. This is a 30 cent pocket sized composition notebook. This is a 75 cent gel pen. And these are in my pocket at all times. The exercise that I would suggest, try, try for a week, something pops into your head, write it down. You think something, write it down. You feel something, write it down. It doesn't have to be written well. It doesn't have to be, uh, it doesn't have to be well composed. It doesn't have to be written in any way other than the way that you want to write it. It doesn't have to be complete sentences. Write it down. The act of writing down your own thoughts is a self-received statement that your thoughts are worth writing down. That thing that just popped into your head was worth writing down. That thing, that, that fluctuation of emotion was worth writing down. People are narcissists. There is, there is an overabundance of narcissism in our culture. Narcissus was in love with his reflection, not himself. One of the necessary offices of personal engagement with, with your own experience is recognizing the ambiguities therein. Recognizing, recognizing that... Um, uh, rec uh, recognizing that that ambiguity is not something that we can avoid or should avoid um, because it is intrinsic. It is it is deep in our minute to minute, second to second experience. One of the things that we need to recognize that there is great value in recognizing. Is that the uh, uh, is that much of the turmoil, much of the struggle, much of the frustration, grief, pain, um, hatred, and spite that we um, that we encounter 
is the result of investment in that which we hope will bring us certainty. And one of the reasons that I strongly advocate engagement with personal experience, um, deep engagement and contemplation of personal experience, is that it's akin to it's it's akin to walking into the closet in which you fear there may be a monster. As long as you remain, um, uh, as long as you remain huddled with your uh, the uh, the blankets up to your nose, the idea that there might be a monster in the closet is terrifying. If you take blankets, pillows, and all, and walk into the closet and just sack out there for the night, it's much less frightening. It's much less frightening to walk in there and discover that there is not uh, uh, that that there isn't something waiting there to eat you. In much the same way, um, engaging ambiguity, engaging the vagueness, the, the unknowableness, the misty, half-obscured, half-image, half-shadows of thoughts and feelings within ourselves, in engaging with them, we find out that maybe we don't know who we are, and maybe that's okay. Maybe that's not a problem. Maybe that's not the end of the world. Maybe that's not the end of our lives. Maybe that's not the terrible thing that we, we fear it is. And in taking our own thoughts and emotions seriously, and recognizing that there is ambiguity in them, we are practicing something else as well. Engaging the thoughts and feelings of other people and recognizing the ambiguity in them. Recognizing that much of what we encounter, much of what we deal with, much of what we encounter and much of what we deal with in other people, much of what we find destruct uh, destructive, disruptive, or frustrating in dealing with other people, is the artifacts of certainty that they pursue, the ways in which they are desperate to avoid engaging the ambiguities of self, much as they are frustrated with ours. There's far more room for a, a syncretistic approach, a compatibilistic approach, a synergistic approach, when we are more interested in the ideas themselves, both ours and others, than we are in uh, uh, than we are in um, running from any any hint of ambiguity, running to any promise or shadow of certainty. 